So do you find it beneficial for close friends or parents to be involved before choosing a spouse? I absolutely do, um, especially if, well, whether if you're going into an arranged marriage or if you're going into a marriage for love, um, I think it is important to get the opinion of your elders, um, specifically elders that you trust. Yeah. Um, especially like when it comes to friends and family, if you're uh, family oriented and you like spending time with the family for holidays and birthdays and sports events, etc., and you know you're going to want your spouse in that environment, it is best to go ahead and introduce, you know, like your spouse to your friends and your family, like before you join in union. And sometimes like our, um, our, friends and our family, they can see things that we can't see. Especially like, you know, when you're in the midst of the relationship and you got those, you know, what you think are butterflies and, you know, you're still in that honeymoon stage. It's like if you're not fully into reality and you can't see like their red flags, it's like sometimes you do need like that that family or that elder or like that really close friend who you trust um, to actually, you know, just kind of give you like their opinion on who you're choosing to be like your potential forever mate. I hope that you're the one and that you are the prototype. Well are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom. Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. Arranged marriages. Are there any benefits to arranged marriages? We're going to talk about that more in detail. Should your close friends and family be involved in your process before choosing a spouse. All in this on the next sec on this segment of a scary to remarry. What's up, Brave Hearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of a scary to remarry, inspiring you to love fearlessly. Today's guest is a psychology grad. Guilford College in Greensboro, North Carolina. She is a five-year relationship coach, conflict resolution specialist, and God is first in her life. And her life purpose is to help keep <clears throat> his families together. Brave Arts community, let's show some love to Jay Mosley. How are you doing this evening, Jay? I am great. I hope you are too. I am excited about this topic. I, I came across your Instagram, of course, we're connected. Mm -hmm. But this topic, when I seen your reel on this, on arranged marriages, I want to uh, talk about your experience in this. So can you talk about arranged marriages? Now, for those who might not understand, can you help us understand that? And then can you talk about your experience? Yes, absolutely. I understand that arranged marriages um, is not... It's not very commonly talked about, um, especially here in the United States, because typically when you think of an arranged marriage, you think of maybe like more of an international marriage. 
um, especially like it's really popular in like Asian, uh, Asian, Indian, African cultures. Um, but an arranged marriage is usually when someone of a third party, usually like an elder or a parent, um, they will connect like uh, their daughter or son with someone who they believe will be a proper or a good spouse. And usually the person that they want their son or daughter to marry, they see as someone who would be beneficial for their family. Um, and here in the United States, um, I actually took a course when I was in college on African-American families. And that's when where I learned about arranged marriages. Mm -hmm. I learned that um, within the African-American community, predominantly the upper and middle class, that's where you'll see, or that's where you can find more couples who get into arranged marriages. Mm -hmm. And it's normally between like uh, either two families who want to join together either for money or for status, like social status, mm -hmm. um, sometimes even power if they own like a lot of corporations, um, if there is wealth involved, that's where you're going to predominantly see arranged marriages. Um for my experience personally, I married into a family who was very academically forward. Um, my uh, ex-husband um, had a very academically forward family. Uh, they were upper middle class. And me and my ex-husband, we were friends for a long time. Um, they knew that I was in school. His parents really admired that I was in school getting my psychology degree. They admired that I wanted to be a marriage counselor. They really liked my lifestyle, which was just very typical girl going to school, working hard, uh, trying to make something of herself. And they thought that I would be a great companion for their son. Um, they already had another son who was very academically forward. Um, he was in the uh, film industry, uh, but he was doing really great in their life. And they just had one more son who they were like okay you know he's a hard worker uh he was really good in school he was like valley victorian in, in high school so they said okay you know son we want you to get married yeah. so uh his really only option was me someone who he had tried to be in a relationship with it didn't really work out but his family loved me so much that they made sure i was like well taken care of financially before we got married and we were just friends so when my father passed away, um, I was living with my father. They said, OK, well, basically, that was their opportunity. They said, OK, you know, son, we want you to be married. We have Janira over here. Um, you know, she's a really great girl. Let's just go ahead and enter her into the family. So we went to the courthouse. We got mm -hmm. married with like his parents' blessings. Um, and we knew that we were what I consider unequally yoked because I'm a woman of God. Um, my husband and his family, they, they sort of practiced the Christian faith, but they weren't as into the Christian faith as I was. So I knew that I was unequally yoked and not from just my husband, from, but from his family. So the clause that we created for our arranged marriage was that we were going to be married for no more than five years. And within that five year time period, I was allowed to um, finish my degree. Um, I was allowed to um, do like internships uh, because I'm pursuing my master's. And they basically just wanted me to have the experience of being a stay at home wife. But at the same time, um, helping them like manage the, like just manage the basics of the family and just keeping like a normal flow, like still going on those family vacations, um, still making sure that like the children in the family were tended to. Um, so I got that experience. Mm -hmm. And because of my ex-husband's family status, um, they wanted to acquire a home here in North Carolina and a home in uh, Clarksville, Tennessee. So I live between two states. So they were more than happy to take care of me financially because 
when you're living between two states, it's hard to <laughs> like work full time unless you're going to be like hybrid or remote. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so in our marriage, my role was to just make sure that I kept the family um, like afloat with basically just, you know, doing whatever it is that they needed me to do. Um, and just making sure that I held to my end of the agreement, which was staying married for at least like the five years. Yeah. Um, we actually ended up um, parting in four years just because I became financially stable. And we just thought that it was the best thing to do since we knew that we already had that clause. Mm. So yeah. what, what was going through your mind going into an arranged marriage? Like what, what were your initial thoughts? In that <laughs> um initially honestly the only reason why i did it um the only reason why i didn't really hesitate in order to in going into the arranged marriage was because i took that course in class about like african-american families mm -hmm. um and had a little bit of knowledge on what an arranged marriage was Mm -hmm. So I think without that knowledge, I definitely would have been a little bit more hesitant. And I think it also helped that with my arranged marriage, I already knew the family and I already built a relationship with them. So it wasn't like I was walking into something that was like brand new or something that was like unknown. Mm -hmm. So do you find it beneficial for close friends or parents to be involved before choosing a spouse? I absolutely do, um, especially if, well, whether if you're going into an arranged marriage or if you're going into a marriage for love, um, I think it is important to get the opinion of your elders, um, specifically elders that you trust, yeah. um, especially like when it comes to friends and family, if you're uh, family oriented and you like spending time with the family for holidays and birthdays and sports events, et cetera, and you know you're going to want your spouse in that environment, it is best to go ahead and introduce, you know, like your spouse to your friends and your family, like before you join in union. And sometimes like our, um, our friends and our family, they can see things that we can't see, mm -hmm. especially like, you know, when you're in the midst of the relationship and you got those, you know, what you think are butterflies and, you know, you're still in that honeymoon stage it's like if you're not fully into reality and you can't see like their red flags, it's like sometimes you do need like that that family or that elder or like that really close friend who you trust um, to actually, you know, just kind of give you like their opinion on who you're choosing to be like your potential forever mate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree because they don't have that attachment, right? Mm -hmm. they, the, the people that's on the outside looking in. If you have questions for today's guest, feel free to leave them in the chat below. We'd we'll love to hear from you. And th this is, I wanted to know, how do you feel about if someone that you trust in your family, whether if it's a close friend or elder, what if they disapprove? Uh, disapprove. I mean, I went through this. Um, not everybody in my family was okay with me choosing to be in an arranged marriage, and not everybody in my family was okay with my uh, with my spouse because, as I said, like me and my spouse, we were like unequally yoked. So a lot of people were like, okay, well, not a lot of people, but a few of my friends uh, who I trusted, they're like, okay, you know, Janira, you like going to church every Sunday. He hasn't been to church since he was like eight. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah so it's like you know they had to point out those little things to me just so I could stay like mindful of it um but I think it's definitely um important for you to make the best decision that's going to I would say improve your life um because I am a woman of God I always believe that you should you know make the best decision on choosing a spouse that's going to um increase or deepen your relationship with God um, and at the end of the day, it's like you can take those opinions um, and you can acknowledge them, acknowledge your friends and your family for their opinions, thank them for their opinions and just try not to, I would say not take it to heart, but try not to get upset if they have an opinion that's different from your own. 
Yeah. But yeah, we definitely take it into consideration because typically the people around us can see things about our spouses that sometimes we just can't see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because do, do you think that's like a lost art? Because people nowadays, I mean, people, they just get married. They like, <laughs> I'm yeah. not telling anybody, you know, we might elope, um, things of that nature. But but why do you think, what do you think changed throughout? Because it seemed like back in the day and in and, and biblical time and stuff like that, like, where do you think the change came? Do you think people just became more independent where we don't really value community anymore? Um, Absolutely. And I mean, like, you know, if you have your relationship with God um, and if you study the Bible, you understand that there is going to be coming a time period where people are going to be more into themselves than they are, you know, their loved ones. And I feel like that as we are approaching those times, you're going to like, you're going to witness a lot of people who are going to make decisions like just based on themselves without thinking about how it's going to affect the people around them. Mm -hmm. And I think because we went through because I would say like somewhere around 2000, somewhere around 2008, between 2012, I remember seeing self-love all over the internet. It was self-love this, self-love that, self-care this. <laughs> and it's like, it was literally all about self. And I'm like, okay, so we're, we're getting more towards self and like away from the community. And I think that definitely played a part in people not even considering their elders, not considering getting like premarital counseling or like um, like counseling from elders in the church. Mm -hmm. And people just kind of just did their own thing and did what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I hon honestly, I feel like it's unfortunate because I think that also um, contributes to how we have such a high divorce rate now in the United States. Yeah. And I think it's because we have like what you just said, just gotten away from the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because community is is everything. I remember growing up, everyone on the block, we all knew each other's names. We all knew each other's yeah. people, all that <laughs> stuff, you know, and I guess I'm telling my age. But <laughs> there was I mean, if you think about society now, when I come home from work, I can open up my garage door six, seven houses down and just go straight into my, my driveway. And I don't have to speak to anybody. Close my garage door. I'm done. You know, yeah. uh, I remember you know, back in the day when you came home, there were people outside and you would be speaking to them. And, you know, you just had that community, mm -hmm. you know, where everybody was somewhat forced to, to know each other. Um, and, and you had people who looked out for you, but I guess that's, that's that's old school stuff now, <laughs> you know. So yeah. I think it's the same way with dating, right? We just kind of go on the apps and find someone or whatever, and we just like, all right, I'm I'm out. I got, I got who I want. I feel good. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. The 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 butterflies, right? Um, right. Yeah, I think we definitely have um, gotten a lot into um, like just moving with what we feel like you know what people say what the vibes are yeah and not, yeah you know like considering you know who you choose on this dating app could potentially be your spouse and you know like that could be a trickling effect as far as like how your friends and your family could treat you going forward so mm -hmm. I mean yeah I definitely think it is important to have at the very least like just one person you can like confide in and consult uh, with, you know, like whenever you are in the dating world and, you know, trying to choose a new spouse. Yeah. How, how did, what was your response to like those who you were close to that they, they were telling you like, Oh, he haven't been to church in years. Like, did you, did you take that feedback into consideration or were you just kind of, more set on like I'm going to follow through regardless yeah I mean I definitely took that into consideration because I had to make sure that I still had people in my life who could help keep me grounded so I didn't lose my faith mm -hmm. um and because at the time like that was like the best decision for me 
Um, a lot of like my friends and family, they understood why I was making that decision. Um, because I was in a place where um, I was actually staying with my father and my father was falling ill. I was helping uh, take care of him and I didn't know that he was going to pass away the year that he passed away. Like, I thought that, you know, it was a possibility my father was going to get better and, you know, maybe he was going to have like a few more years. And while I was there, um, my plan was to like get myself um, in a place like better financially, you know, purchase my own home, like go from there. But, you know, as they say, sometimes God laughs at your plans. <laughs> Yeah, they right. don't know <laughs> as Yeah. you think they are. And um, and going into the arranged marriage was basically like it was for survival and it was my safe haven. Um, you know, like my family, they didn't fully agree with the guy who I was dating. And it was because my family knew of the relationship we had previously because um, we did try to do like the we did try to date um, that didn't work out. We tried to. like come back together, everything was working good. Then we got engaged, that didn't work out. So then after that, we was just like, hey, we're just gonna be friends. But he said, you know, I've been taking care of you for the last few years. I'm gonna keep doing my due diligence, even as a friend and making sure that, you know, your car note is paid. If you need a car, I'll buy the car. You know, you need a phone bill paid. Like he just made sure he had like everything on auto pay for me. Um, so, you know, like my family, they understood the aspect of that because it was really hard for me to work and get a psychology degree at the same time, especially like when you're going for your psychology degree, it's like you have to put in um, like clinical hours, you have to write sometimes these 10, 20, 30 page papers, you have like all these deadlines to meet. So it's like trying to work for somebody And trying to like meet like, you know, the grading requirements, it was a huge struggle. <laughs> so yeah, my family, they fully understood why I was going into an arranged marriage, even if they fully didn't agree with it. Yeah, I bet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. I mean, yeah, because that's tough trying to, like you say, work and go to school. I don't even imagine, you know. Um, I wanted to ask you, do you feel like there's still a societal pressure to get married? Absolutely. Especially um, when you cross, I would say that threshold of 25. After 25, that's when people like, especially your friends and your family um, are looking at you because they're expecting you to go ahead and carry out, you know, carry on the legacy of the family. So there's definitely a societal pressure to get married and have kids. Um, I think the only thing that people don't really take account of is that we're living in a new digital age where it's not like, you know, your parents who met each other because they live like one street over. Now is, you know, we have the options of who lives a street over plus who lives like in the next town, in the next state. And even sometimes in the next country, <laughs> yeah, so it's like that pressure is still there, but we're in a new dynamic of dating now. So I think dating is a lot more accessible, but because we have so many options, I think it's made it a little harder for people to actually like date, choose a spouse, and then, you know, go forth with having a family. But that pressure is definitely still there. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, that's that's interesting because I mean I I met my wife on Instagram. Um I don't know if you Know, know our story but we married six months and a year later I relocated to Texas Mm hmm so it was like at that time when I was telling people because this you know I, I remarried so uh hence scary to be married right and I remember friends who were like why don't you just hold off and do some more dating and I just I was like, I'm good. Like, I felt like I didn't need to go on any other dates. Yeah. Uh, I felt like she was everything that I wanted. And I'm like, because sometimes I think when people are dating and, and let me know what you think. I think sometimes people and I think guys do this maybe more than women. And correct me if I'm wrong. I think guys date 
and then they like have two or three women that they are really really interested in and then they try to do the whole process of elimination thing to me the only thing with that is it's like what if you wait too long and you you lose out on that that good woman because you're trying to be greedy <laughs> So I don't know. I I that's what a lot of guys do. I don't know. I don't know how women do it, but I think a lot of guys struggle with that. Yeah, I think it's honestly the same on uh both playing fields. Um, I think women go through the same thing, uh, especially like on like coming from a woman's perspective, it's like as soon as you put like a picture of your face, and I'm talking about like just a headshot online, all of a sudden, like your DMs are flooded, your Facebook messenger is flooded, you put just your face, like, you know, if you know how to, if you're a woman and you know you're of a certain aesthetic, especially if you have like a pretty face and a pretty smile, it's like, you know, you're you're going to get a ton of options. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think honestly, it's the same on both sides. I think the only difference is there are certain people who don't want to have a lot of options where, um, you know, they get luck, not lucky, but they become blessed. I would say like in your situation where like they meet that great person and they're like, okay, I'm done. And it's like, I'm a pray if God, you know, we all pray that one prayer, like God, if they're not for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. That's the classic, the classic one. Right. <laughs> oh my God. That's funny. Uh, what advice would you give to couples who are uncertain if their relationship is built on true love or infatuation? Um, there is, uh, gosh, I keep forgetting the scripture, but there's a scripture in the Bible where it's like, love is kind, love is patient, mm -hmm. love does not boast. Yeah. Yeah, et cetera. I was like, if you can just take that person's name and swap it out with love, mm -hmm. that's how I feel that you know if you have someone that you're number one equally yoked with mm -hmm. and number two like if this is somebody who is actually going to be capable of building a life with you and not someone who just wants you for like per se your looks because everybody knows that looks is going to fade mm -hmm. like you know me personally I think everybody should be dating you know, for someone who can take you to your doctor appointments when you turn 70s, mm -hmm. somebody who's going to be by your bedside if you fall ill, like you need someone who already is established and having that type of family orientation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think the, the problem with that is a lot of people get married not thinking 50 years from now. Yeah, <laughs> we're only looking at the one person. We're, we're looking at that person like today, and and, and that's it. You know, we're so caught up in a moment uh, because I, I heard a guy. I heard a. I think he was a, like a he was a doctor or something. And he was saying how the way you treat your your wife when you are healthy is the same way she's going to treat you when you're sick. Mm, I like that quote. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's good. And I, I, I like that concept. You know, it was <laughs> my wife is a nurse, so I always joke around and tell her, I'm like, I'm good. I'm, I'm 12 years older than her. You know, I'm like, oh, you take care of me when I'm old, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think we get married for today and not think about 30 years from now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I, I joke around and tell people that I heard my bowels the second time around. <laughs> <When I, laughs> the first time I was just like, oh, just, you know, but that second time around, I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Do you, would you, would you remarry? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm actually in the process of dating right now um, because um, me and my husband, we've been separated, well, ex-husband, we've been separated for almost a year now, and I wanted to take some time and, like, really strengthen my relationship with God, and I wanted to wait until he gave me, like, the green light to go ahead and just kind of put myself out there, yeah. so right now, I am in the process of dating, um, because I do want to get remarried, I do still want a family, um, so, yeah, I was like, there's, there's really no more time left for me to 
like really be on the fence about it because I know it's something that I want. It's not, I know it's something that I want. It's something that I'm confident in. Um, because like the aesthetic of marriage, I feel it's just a really great way to live. Like, you know, especially like when you're an older adult, it's nice to have somebody to share your life with, somebody to build your relationship like with Christ with. Um, and someone to share those same like values as you. Like, I don't think there's, really anything better in life than honestly being in love and building um, a family and doing it all under the umbrella of God. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. I'm, I'm, I'm just the marriage type. I, I was just built like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I seen my brother stay married to one woman over 25 years. Um, and he was married for, I think, maybe five or 10 by the time he's probably about married. No, he was married probably about a year or two, but they were like in a relationship. And I was like, oh, this is cool. They're, they're consistent. I see them together all the time and I seen them build. And I was fortunate to see that. Uh, and even with my old pastor back home in Cleveland, I seen him and his wife grow and build together and they're still married. And I was like, I want that. You know? Yeah. Um, Let's kind of switch gears a little bit okay. because I want to kind of talk about culture right now. Uh, yeah. And we we talk, kind of talked about this, right? Mm -hmm. So this the Terrace Whitfield thing and Tony Gaskins. Mm -hmm. What because I sent you that one video earlier and I I it was very eye-opening. Yeah. What what were your thoughts on that whole situation? Uh, let's see. So I don't know a whole lot about Lateris. I only saw um, a few interviews that he did with Dana Jackson. Mm -hmm. um, and it's another Christian influencer. I think her name is Whitney. Um, and I thought he's a, like, from the interviews, I thought he was, like, a really great interview. I didn't actually learn about, like, his personal life until... I looked at some of the videos today and just my opinion, I believe that he's just out here um, telling his story, uh, telling his testimony, um, just like any other influencer who is trying to get a message across about possibly like what not to do. And then like, if you're in that situation where you find yourself like being an influencer who is about marriage and, you know, you have to talk about, like, your spouse. Um, I I mean, I agree with the way I, I saw a video with the way he said he was going about it. He got permission from his spouse to, you know, say what he wanted, what he wanted to say. He said that they were still friends um, and everything was great. I think that Tony Gaskins <laughs> had his... His opinions and his reservations, which I actually watch a lot of his videos. Okay. And I saw the videos where he was actually talking about Lateris, and I didn't know who that was that he was talking about. Um. Not until today. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, but I've also seen videos where Tony Gaskins has uh, openly admitted that, you know, sometimes he does say things out of context when he's feeling like passionate mm -hmm. or like, you know, really strong in the moment. So I'm interested to see if, like, as time passes by, if he'll retract or if he'll have, um, or if, you know, if maybe him and his wife will go on Latarius' show, because supposedly Latarius said he offered, Tony Gaston said he didn't get the offer, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm interested to see how this may evolve. Yes. Yes. Because I... I seen a little bit about it and then I was like went down this whole rabbit hole and I'm just like, oh my God. Like um <laughs> uh, and, and I'm I'm aware of uh Lateris. I I've been listening to both of them or at least kind of in and out of their content for some years. So I am familiar with their stories. Uh my only because Tony got into it with uh, Ace Metaphor or something like that on Harley Initiated. I don't know who that is. Yeah, he this other guy, Ace Metaphor. He's he has a I think it's called Conversations Tonight or something like that. I'm sure you've seen probably a real because a lot of his stuff goes viral. Um, 
But anyway, him and Tony kind of got into it on Harley Initiated. And I was just like, oh, man, this guy, he's going in. And, you know, to each his own, I just think, like, yeah, we should call out sin and stuff like that. I get it. But at the same time, I think it's important that we know how to extend grace and if we are having some differences or whatever it is, like let's just have a conversation off, off in off the internet, and yeah. let's handle that accordingly. And, and if it doesn't work for whatever reason, like that's okay. But to put people out there, I mean, I try to give people grace because I'm like, look, God is gracious to me, right? So who am I, so who am I to to try to put somebody out there? You know, I I posted something on social media not too long ago. I said, when someone's sin is exposed, don't celebrate. Just be happy you didn't get caught. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, so yeah. Uh, and I mean, I've been watching Tony Gaskins for like a long, I would say a long time, and I would say the main message that he talks about that I think I always come into agreement with him is when he talks about abstinence, yeah. um, especially when it comes to women, because I think it's so important um, that we preserve ourselves, like until we get into like that holy matrimony. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, even though sometimes his message can definitely come off as harsh, <laughs> I think <laughs> it's like, I think he honestly comes out that way because like, if you look in his comments sometimes, like he definitely gets a lot of backlash um, from women who don't agree with his message. And I think it's just natural in his spirit that he gives a little bit of a pushback. Yeah, um, yeah but I, the one thing that I would say I wouldn't mock or um, take after him is I don't think I would actually just call out people's names. That's yeah. definitely not my ministry. <laughs> yeah. But um, even like influencers like uh, like Derek Jackson, it's like a lot of people have, you know, shunned away from listening to his message. Um, and not that him um, and Tony Gaskins are the same, but I think that both of them spread a similar message of talking about their backgrounds um, where they weren't so, you know, where they weren't great men um, and just, you know, telling women how to avoid the type of men that they used to be. Mm -hmm. So whenever I see an influencer have that type of background, that's the message that I normally take from them. Yeah, yeah, same. I, I just think my only thing is because that was you, mm -hmm. that should want you to give grace to others mm -hmm. who who are are still maybe trying to find themselves. Yeah, definitely. You know, so um, but that's me to each his own. I I, I have a past. You know, we all have one, right? We all a bunch of ex somethings. Uh, so so to that person who who I was maybe like when I was 19 you know doing stuff I shouldn't be doing mm -hmm. it's cool to uh, you know talk about your your past and stuff like that but at the same time to just show some grace and, and yeah there should be some correction too I get that yeah. but we just gotta be mindful of the way because it's easy to beat people up and then expect for them to just come to Christ. Like, <laughs> you know, so we got to be careful how we, how we handle people, especially those who aren't believers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's something that we definitely run into as Christian influencers, um, especially when you're trying to spread like, you know, God's message and you're um, portraying the life. Um, where you know you're putting God first yeah. it's like those people who don't you know necessarily understand like that that walk with Christ it's like you know they definitely do give you some pushback but I think the best course of action is to um, handle it with kind with kindness um, with care and also like if you can do it which I know is kind of hard but you know um, walk in meekness Yes. Um, yeah, that's that's literally the platform that I will 100 percent stand on because I mean, I've been in situations where, you know, I have faced an unbeliever 
who has cursed me out like in front of my face. <laughs> like, you know, forget the internet trolls. But, like I have somebody, you know, like trying to curse me out in front of my face all because I think I, you know, was taking up the microwave or something at work. And, you know, she, you know, was just like attacking me, like, you know, from all different directions. And I was like, you know what, God, this is a test. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, you know. this is a test. I was like, and I'm going to pass it, too. I, <laughs> I like, smiled. I stepped away. And I was like, girl, you got it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know, right? Amen to that. Well, yeah, I'm sure that and you never know how your response could have played into their life, you know, and even you not responding how they took that, you know, that could that could have affected them to make them maybe think twice in the future. Like, oh, yeah, I was I was pretty harsh. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. This has been a phenomenal episode. Jay, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Give us all your information. I have everything linked up in the description below. Yes, absolutely. Um, you can find me on Facebook um, under Related Couples Coaching. Uh, you can find me on Instagram under Related Couples Coaching. And if I'm not mistaken, my TikTok is also under Elated Couples Coaching, or it may just be under uh, Jay Mosley. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So those three channels, you can reach out to me. Um, I'm very kind, so I don't mind DMs and messages. Um, at this current time, I am putting my coaching services on pause, but I don't turn anyone away. So um, whether you have questions that you put in my comments or in my messenger, my DM. Um, I definitely try to reach out to everyone in a timely manner. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm still here to help. Uh, but as soon as my coaching services are back up and running, I'll definitely be posting that content. Yeah, for sure. Sounds good. Thank you so much for your time. Very far as community, you heard it here. Make sure you go connect with Jay. I'll have everything linked in the description below. If you are watching this via YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button, share this with a friend, share this in your group chat. You know, it's like five of y'all in your group chat, like send this video, take the link, put it in your group chat and then y'all watch it and then y'all talk about it. Uh, that's that's how you get people to, you know, create a buzz. But anyway, uh, if you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts by doing so. It puts you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card who doesn't like free stuff. This is Sean Heineman with special 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 guest, <laughs> Jay Mosley, and we are.